Hi, good evening to you, viewers. Welcome to the Barbados Church of Nazarene Family Forum. We are very pleased to share with you as usual. Thank you for your feedback, and we appreciate the feedback you give on the, this Church of Nazarene Family Forum program. Um, as we said before, we share with you every Sunday at 5 o'clock. And uh, why not invite a friend and a family member to share with you? Today we are focusing on an area of critically important disaster preparedness. And we, we really recognize that this is very, at this point, very pivotal. And I trust that as we share that you would benefit. So call a friend, family member, and of course, invite him to share with us. And uh, today we have with us, as usual, our co-host, Reverend Kelman. A very pleasant good afternoon to you. Right. And with us we have um, Andrea Grosner. Andrea. Good afternoon, viewers. All right. And Reverend Kelman will introduce her later. That's right. <laughs> uh, but we are pleased to have you with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to All right. I just want to share a Bible verse with you, as we normally do. Disaster preparedness. Um, Psalm 46, 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake, with their surging. And uh, verse 11 says, The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And indeed, in times of disaster, we do sense that we're in trouble. But we're glad that we have the abiding presence of God, indeed, and the support of um, an agency like Sedema. And indeed, Ms. Grosner and her team to give us the guidance through those difficult times when disaster strikes. Of course, you know the hurricane season around the corner as well. So we want to be prepared. But let's pray. Father, we thank you for this session today as we focus on disaster preparedness. We recognize the significance not only about talking about disasters and hurricanes and even in the face of the present volcanic eruption in St. Vincent, I'm sure that, Lord, that this shows us the importance of being able to manage, manage disasters, not only by governments and institutions in the country, but surely by the family and the church as well. We all have to be on board. I pray as we share in today's session that you will guide us. He says, I'll pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, welcome back to you, viewers, and Vizor distinct privilege and pleasure to have this very beautiful lady with us this, um, this evening. Her name that we said before is Andrea Grovener, and she is indeed a deputy director, as a director of Sedema, and um, uh, that, that means Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency. Did they get it correctly? Yes, they did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and she has been active for over a quarter century. 25 years mm -hmm. of giving support to uh, many uh, countries who are caught uh, in the grip of disaster. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea has worked as far back as, as, as the Montserrat volcano, mm -hmm. um, uh, right through to Dominica, um, Irma. Uh, she worked in giving, giving support in the Bahamas. She has a wealth of experience in terms mm -hmm. 
um, of this particular area. And so uh, we thought it very, very, very useful and we can find out what the kind of experience that she has uh, to present to us this, this evening on uh, some broad ideas as to how we can manage disaster. Welcome to you, Andrea. So good to have you. And Thank it's over you very to you. much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. This afternoon, I just want to share a few thoughts with you as it relates to uh, our resilience in the Caribbean region. I, I know that as you look around you, and as you've had experiences either in your own country or in countries that you've visited, you recognize that we live in a very special region. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, very have special. A, we have a very beautiful, very, very beautiful region. Um, we are accustomed to our beautiful sunshine and our beautiful beaches. And there are also various landforms like volcanoes as well that we, en that we enjoy the, the the, the serenity when they are not active. When, you know, mm -hmm. we, we enjoy those things. And in fact, um, the, the, very, the very way our environment has been formed in the Caribbean, how our wet season, our dry seasons operate, mm -hmm. many of those things are really aligned with our, our meteorology. So you would notice that our wet season coincides with the hurricane season mm -hmm, right. and our dry season coincides when there's no there's no hurricanes around. So there 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 is a natural process mm -hmm. that we have in terms of the environment in which we live in. Mm -hmm. But this environment the, there is there is a lot of beauty with it and there are a lot of hazards that are associated with it. Mm -hmm. So we know that we are prone to a number of the natural hazards, such as the hurricanes mm -hmm. and the earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. Mm -hmm. There's also the possibility of tsunamis. Mm -hmm. There are possibilities of floods. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the, what we call the human-induced hazards. These are actions by man, which might be fires, mm -hmm. accidents, mm -hmm. well, unfortunately, threats of terrorism, etc. Mm -hmm. So these are, this is the nature of the environment that we live in. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is said that the Caribbean is the second most hazard-prone region in the world. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it is only the, the Asia-Pacific region that we can say that it's most hazard-prone. So in fact, therefore, we live in a society that we have to face a lot of hazards. Mm -hmm. And so it is important that we ourselves put in place certain measures which will help us to manage the hazards that we face. Mm -hmm. And I want to begin this portion of it by looking very broadly as at, at this whole idea of how do we how do we contextualize what we are doing to have a a, a, a larger outlook mm -hmm. on, on 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 the work that we do. So we know that we have development aspirations in the region mm -hmm. and those development aspirations um, they are they are affected and though it, it could be, you know, for a society that functions better, um, the type of, of buildings and infrastructure that we would want to have, the type of places we want to go, if it's parks or beaches, etc. But one impact of a hazard, whether it's a hurricane or earthquake or whatever, it derails that. You've built it up over 10, 20 years, and the setback is amazing. You would have recently heard about the economic report for Barbados. And the fact that we have a 20% a, a decline in GDP due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the economists saying that really and truly development in Barbados has been set back seven years mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. So this is the reality of the hazard prone environment in which we live. Mm -hmm. So do we just say there's nothing that we can do? Mm -hmm. That's, we can't say that. We mm -hmm. have to be able to put things in place that allows us to cope mm -hmm. and to strive. Mm -hmm. And so the, the Caribbean region has been in, implementing the Comprehensive Disaster Management Approach, the Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy, and CDM is an all-hazards approach. So we're looking at all the hazards that we face, mm -hmm. um, the hurricanes, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, the pandemic, pandemic or diseases, etc. We're looking at all the hazards. We're looking at, it is in, involves all people of society. It involves the private sector, it in, involves the public sector, mm -hmm. it involves all the sectors of the economy, it involves the church, True. it involves you and I mm -hmm. as, as, as people. Mm -hmm. And um, 
we, 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 so we're looking at all the, all the, all the, all the hazards and we're looking at all the phases. So we're not just looking at how we respond, mm -hmm. we're looking at also how we mitigate. In other words, how do we put things in place that, that either prevent the hazard or prevent their impact, the impact of the hazard. We're looking at how we respond. We're looking also at how we are able to recover or rehabilitate. So mm -hmm. these are things that we are, are seeking to, to do. And, and so we prepare, we respond, we recover, we rehabilitate. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, many persons will remember the, the, that we had three Category 5 hurricanes in the, in the Caribbean region, two of which impacted our states, Hurricanes Irma and Hurricanes uh, Maria, mm -hmm. causing extensive da damage, up to over 200% of GDP in, in damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, Caribbean, the, the heads of government of the Caribbean community would have looked at this whole matter of resilience. Mm -hmm. What is resilience? It is the ability to adapt, it's the ability to respond and to recover, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a way to cope, a, a, a mechanism to cope. Mm -hmm. But in the Caribbean, we said, they asked us to redefine it. And we said, we, we, for resilience, we don't just want to adapt. We want to be able to bounce forward. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we have the whole concept in resilience of building back better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to bounce forward more quickly mm -hmm. in a way that allows us to reduce our susceptibility, our likelihood of being harmed mm -hmm. in a way that we are able to not just cope, but we are able to thrive. Right. It, is, it, it may seem an ambitious mm -hmm. type of approach, mm -hmm. but it certainly starts with the mindset, mm -hmm. the mindset that this can be done. If you think about it, it's very important because if we're impacted in one hurricane season, mm -hmm. say in September, mm -hmm. the next hurricane season mm -hmm. is in a few months, mm -hmm. nine cool. months away. Yeah. So it, it, it really and truly we have to have this ability to be able to do so mm -hmm. and to be able to have ourselves able to recover and to thrive. Mm -hmm. But we're not just talking about, about the hurricanes. We are in a multi-hazard environment. Mm -hmm. Here in, in Barbados, we are dealing with the COVID-19 impact. And we, we, last year, we went through a, a severe drought at the time when hand washing and, and wiping away mm -hmm. would have been important. Mm -hmm. And then we have the hurricane season, which will be fast approaching. And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they are also dealing with a volcano yes, eruption. Right. And in Barbados, we've had to deal with the yes. ash. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a multi, and you're, you, this is the sort of cascading effect of mm -hmm. all these hazards in the space at the same time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we agreed upon is that as, as the heads of government of the Caribbean community, they have agreed upon what they call a resilience framework mm -hmm. and how we sort of have a path towards resilience in the Caribbean region. Mm -hmm. And it's built upon five pillars, mm -hmm. social protection mm -hmm. for the marginal and the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. enhancing economic opportunity, safeguarding infrastructure, environmental protection, and operational readiness and recovery. Now, this may seem quite, this program may be geared towards the Christian community, but the people who are watching this program are people who are working in the private sector, mm -hmm. they're working in the public sector, right. they're mm -hmm. owning businesses, mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they are people, normal man and woman in the street, they're mm -hmm. working in healthcare, and these issues affect all of us, mm -hmm. and they are very much applicable mm -hmm. and to, to, to all that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about safe, uh, um, social protection for the marginal and the most vulnerable, we recognize that even for the COVID-19 impacts, many people have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Many people are trying to cope. The, the, the government is given the, given a little bit more of a cushion because of the fact that these situations have occurred. We have people who are on the margins of poverty mm -hmm. and because of the COVID-19 impacts, mm -hmm. they have they have, they, they have slumped Slump. below yeah. that poverty line. Mm -hmm. So this is the reality. Mm -hmm. How do we put ourselves in a position in our day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. that we have the ability to absorb these shocks. Mm -hmm. It is how we spend, how we save, <laughs> mm -hmm. and how we look at life, not just for the here and the now, mm -hmm. but also for into the future. Mm -hmm. And how, do the ch how does the church community mm -hmm. support their, 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 their congregations in doing so? Mm -hmm. To think about their lives beyond that, you know, what is happening, no. not, just, not just in the future in mm -hmm. terms of their 
their relationship with God, etc., mm -hmm. and life after death. But how do they plan their lives even here on earth mm -hmm. that allows them to be able to deal with the shocks mm -hmm. that they 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 will get because mm -hmm. this is their reality. Now, actually, I'm thinking even in terms of how we how we construct our church buildings as well. But right. absolutely, yeah. and that's the safeguarding infrastructure. Amen. You know, <laughs> you know, as churches, we sometimes do not give adequate attention to the safety of our church buildings mm -hmm. because we are thinking about the congregation and being able to accommodate the congregation. Mm -hmm. But really and truly we need a home that is a, a, a church home that is safe, mm -hmm. that, 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 that it can be a place of shelter. Look at the ark. Mm -hmm. the ark. The ark was a place of safety. Mm -hmm. And so every church should be a place of safety. Mm -hmm. Look at the destruction across the region a lot of that destruction happened in a lot of churches well. mm -hmm. because of the way we constructed. We, mm -hmm. we would not have, have always put adequate measures in place. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the construction of even some of the places of worship of other non-Christian religions, mm -hmm. the shape of the building, that dome structure, etc., mm -hmm. those structures are hurricane resistant. Mm -hmm. And many churches mm -hmm. in their construction mm -hmm. they, 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 is not hurricane resistant. So mm -hmm. We have to think about it for the church. We have to think about it for your homes. Mm -hmm. Your home will be a major investment. Mm -hmm. And so you have to build in a way, put on your hurricane straps, think about the impacts of an earthquake, etc. These are things. And interestingly enough, we have there has been a study recently that shows that the the only a, an additional only an additional eight percent to ten percent or so is required to put into to place the has hazard resistance. Wow, this is such such, mm -hmm. such serious information though, yes, yes. Um, in terms of how we begin to poise and position ourselves mm -hmm. in order to, to manage disasters. And we're gonna take a short break here. We come back, we're gonna um, ask a few questions yeah. of our very knowledgeable presenter uh, in terms of planning for disaster. So we'll be back. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Okay, Andrew, maybe interrupt please. You, I know you were making some additional points. You're free to go ahead and do that. Thank you so much. So there I just want to touch briefly on the other three pillars. So the other pillar is enhancing economic opportunity. And uh, the, the reality is, is that the, the hazard environment that we are in, we do need to ensure that they, we have finances that we can put in place, mitigation measures. These are things that would prevent our impacts, whether it is about you know ensuring that we are able to, to have some, some canals that would probably bring the water away from communities that can be flooded mm -hmm. in a way that is safe, mm -hmm. that we are able to have structures like hardened structures where I believe that people should have safe homes, but even mm -hmm. if they don't have a safe home, that they can be able to ride out a storm or some event can, you know, can mm -hmm. pro provide that protection. So we need to enhance economic opportunities. And as a church, we still have a role to play in that regard. You know, we can be able to, to, to sh um, strengthen persons in their life skills. Um, and in, in increasing employability. There are a lot of persons who may have a particular technical skill, mm -hmm. but they may not have the skills wherewithal to be within the working environment, those softer skills, mm -hmm. you know, learning mm -hmm. how to, to, to do certain things in, and uh, how to dress for work or how to present themselves in work or to even write a report. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that the church can contribute mm -hmm. yeah. that can increase employability mm -hmm. so enhancing economic opportunity there's also environmental protection so this is the environment that we ourselves sell you know our lovely beaches and our our beautiful parks etc so how do we protect our environment how do we plant a tree mm -hmm. how do we reduce litter how do we ensure that we are not um throwing things into the gully and, and, and throwing things into the drains and those mm -hmm. type of things. These are important educational things that we can teach in our churches. Mm -hmm. There was actually a study that was done uh, by a university in terms of where people learned a lot of things about climate change and environmental protection. And interestingly enough, 
the main place was in the church Whoa. because you have a captive audience mm -hmm. that you can be able to share this information. Mm -hmm. It was not in their school environment. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 this was in the tertiary institution and it was not being in the tertiary institution, but it was from the church. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is a wonderful opportunity for the church as well. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it's operational readiness and, and, and recovery. Mm -hmm. We recognize that the, we will be impacted. And so we have to be ready to respond. Mm -hmm. So how can how can the church, for instance, be involved in it? Like, like we know we have the, the Department of Emergency Management in Barbados, or we have the National Emergency Management Organization in, in um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So there are different organizations mm -hmm. like that. But this is at the national level. But then you come down to the community. So the community itself has to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And the church can give, give a lot of support in allowing and, and training communities to be prepared. Mm -hmm. There's actually something called the Community Emergency Response Team. Mm -hmm. But what if the, the CERT, what if we had a church emergency response team? Mm -hmm. the, these are things that we can do to contribute mm -hmm. to countries being ready and mm -hmm. they can receive training, etc. And then recovery. The planning for recovery starts now, not after you've been impacted. Mm -hmm. It starts now. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we want to be able to ensure that we are putting things in place mm -hmm. for recovery actions. Mm -hmm in our mm -hmm. in our participating states yeah, yeah. In, your, in your conversation i can see the need for the church mm -hmm. to work closer mm -hmm. with city mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. i mean i mean i mean there's so much so much uh, relevant information about party and andrea mm -hmm. in terms of uh the church's ability to, to engage mm -hmm. you know um and, and what, what, what andrea said in response to uh, the whole issue of the community uh, to be level in terms of, of engagement mm -hmm. that, that the church, because we have that, you know, we have people. A captive audience. Right? Yeah, we have persons that, yeah. that can mobilize, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, in terms of that community uh, connection. And, uh, you know, I, I was wondering as well, though, how, in, in terms of the, of the broader regional approach, though, mm -hmm. um, is there is there a process for its operationalization? I mean, mm -hmm. um, is there some kind of, of you know um, chain mm -hmm. as to how we can build down to make this happen absolutely so if i can start at the macro level so this has been agreed by the heads of government of the caribbean community in 2018 mm -hmm. we've been implementing comprehensive disaster management since 2001 we engage sectors etc cetera, etc cetera. interestingly enough we are also in the space now of the the, the rollout uh to be able to see how we can further build a coalition of uh implementing actors and moving forward mm -hmm. through this, the comprehensive disaster management approach. But how do we broaden that? One of the things that we've been able to do recently is to engage the, the private sector even more than we've done before, mm -hmm. seeing them as partners mm -hmm. and how they own build resilience even in their own companies. Mm -hmm. So the church is actually also an, a, 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 another entity. We, as part of our, we have a, 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 a subsector on for civil society and we do have representative of the Christian community there, but there is the opportunity to broaden that, that it gets down to the very micro level. Mm -hmm. And in, in your country, your, your association from the, the, like the, in Barbados, the Department of Emergency Management yeah. for yeah. access to training. Mm -hmm. So at this time they have, they, they need support in damage assessment. They also need support, psychosocial support. Mm -hmm. This is an area where the church with counseling, mm -hmm. you have trained counselors, you have capacity, mm -hmm. who, and it's not only about after. Mm -hmm. To me, the resilience mindset is built now. Mm -hmm. It's attitude. not about a, the attitude, attitude is and important. the approach. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that, I mean, we always have a problem with persons waiting until the last minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, you, you've heard it. Mm -hmm. Persons will go as far as to say, well, God is a Barbadian. God is a Bajan, and so we don't have to worry. Yeah. Well, he's also of <laughs> several nationalities. <laughs> also. But also by yeah. nature of being God. Yeah. I, think sometimes, I, love, I, love that. I think sometimes people say these things to rationalize, perhaps, laissez faire at yes. and so on. Yes. But in all seriousness, Yes, of uh, course. We, we really have to, yeah, God is a bad Beijing as well. Okay. He said he's also a nice. and, yeah. and last minute, the Russians did so much. Last minute, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, um, seem as though they, they are just mm. sitting not prepared. Yeah, yeah. There, I think there are two things. I think there are been probably more than two, but I can highlight probably two. And one is that the, sometimes people believe that they, 
that there's nothing they can do. Yeah. I think people, yes. and, 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 and that, that's and, a good point. Yeah, sometimes people. So there's kind of a fatalistic approach. Yes, yes. What happens, happens. Yes. But that's so dangerous. It is dangerous because remember, and I, I wanted to change our language. Yeah. The language is important. Yeah. Don't talk about a hurricane being a disaster. Because if you say it's a disaster, you've already said that you're that, that things are going to be bad. What do you call it? It is a hazard. Mm -hmm. Hazard. It's a hazard. <laughs> when I drive it down makes a difference. Uh, uh, yes, it makes yes. a difference. When I right. drive down the road mm -hmm. and and, 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 and and if I drive down the road and mm -hmm. I probably have an accident, that might be a disaster for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. How? Well, you might, it might, it might be a hazard. Mm -hmm. But but it can be a disaster yeah. if I'm not wearing my seatbelt. Yeah. That's right. If right. I'm driving too fast. Correct. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but so 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 there are things that I can do to mitigate. To mitigate. Yeah. So that yes, it's a hazard. Mm -hmm. But if I get into an accident, it's not a disaster for me. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. If you do preparation, so, so I wear my seatbelt. Are you so I wear my seatbelt. I belt. check my tires. I check my tires ab yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I, I check my brakes. Yeah. You know, and I and I and I ensure that I drive within mm -hmm. the speed limit. Yeah. So you don't so, get in the car and say whatever happened right. happened, and, uh, and I care less. Absolutely. Right. Correct. It's the same thing with yeah. these e these events. Mm -hmm. We do we do our preparatory actions. Yeah. We do the best we can, mm -hmm. and uh, even if we are impacted. Mm -hmm. Our ability to be even able to get back up, to bounce back, and to bounce back, and yeah. to bounce forward, mm -hmm. can be greatly enhanced. Yeah. Well, what Maria said though is that is that we have got to change our perspective. Absolutely, right? the, and, mindset. Yeah, the mindset, the mindset, uh, yeah, and and that preparation is key. Yeah, uh, to being able to mm -hmm. uh, to respond, you mm -hmm. know, um, to any any hazard. Perhaps Absolutely, that, that perhaps we be. The, long, the wrong mindset for so long. So long yeah. We may have to start teaching. I mean, I know, of course, we've been teachers at some time, you know, we teach it in school, but I think we have to start reinforcing these concepts Absolutely. in the school from primary. Yeah. yeah. But so that know, our people get the right mindset. Yeah, but you know, Reverend Farley, though, the, the whole issue of being the second most has a provision of the world. Yeah, that scares I mean, me. That really jumped at me. Well, you know, I, I, I've never, I never knew that. Right. So I, I'm, I'm being informed. And, I, and I'm wondering though how we can, can roll that if, if not Sunday school mm -hmm. lessons, you know, mm -hmm. if we can maybe on some Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, determine this is going to be um, hazard mitigation Sunday, yeah, mm -hmm. not, and not disaster mm -hmm. Sunday, right? <laughs> right? And, and maybe yeah. and, 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 and on a regular mm. basis, yeah, create yeah. that awareness yeah. among. I um, think as, as a poor. church, we do have responsibility. Yes. To not just to be a shelter yeah. oh. in preparation and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But the time has gone so quickly. <laughs> uh, but as we, of course, uh, listen, listeners and viewers, we're going to have her in the next program again. Um, so we want to thank you very much for sharing with us in this first program. And as we share in the next program, I'm sure there's a lot of information we get from you at this time. Reverend, come and say a closing prayer for us. Thank you. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for the gift of knowledge and for the ability, O oh Father, to prepare and to get ourselves ready in case there are any hazards. We pray, Father, for, for Andre, who's come and, and let us know her wisdom. We pray for your continued direction and the protection and covering over her. And we pray, Father, for as a niche that we would all heed uh, the, the, the warnings, Lord, that we will take care and uh, make sure that we prepare ourselves appropriately uh, for any kind of issues. We give you thanks even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, viewers, thank you. We'll see you in the next program where we continue our discussion on disaster preparedness. God bless you.